Today we're playing the Dr. Chess app for the mobile phone. We're reviewing some online games and trying to go over some mistakes here. Uh, we're looking from Black's perspective here. And we just go to uh, this move right here, this next move. Uh, Black decides to move pawn forward there. Now a better option might be to take, you know, let's say the knight. Knight to c6. Uh, also, there's a couple other pawns that could defend uh, the e5 pawn, but uh, no, black leaves it open here. Not a huge deal. Okay, so white takes. White has a little bit of a, a material advantage. Not a huge advantage. So black decides to move the knight, you know, out of the center, which is a good idea. A good idea because you don't want to have your opponent having pieces in the center. Okay, white retreats. Uh, now, okay. Mistakes happen. Mistakes happen in games. What Black should try to do here is develop some pieces, go on the counter punch. Uh, they've got a couple knights, probably the knight on b8. You got a queen. Well, you probably want to bring queen out early, but you got a bishop. You know, you can push some pawns forward. You know, maybe open up a spot for the other bishop, something like that. But uh, Black decides to play pawn. 2f5, offering an exchange. Okay? Uh, which is not the best idea. Typically, if one wants to improve their chances, it's typically better to try to look for positional advantage if you're going to offer, take an exchange or something, maybe a sacrifice. Uh, but you don't want to, you don't want to just trade off pieces and then whittle down the end game, especially when you're down down material. So uh, better to develop here because there's a lot of combos you can use. But if all these pieces are kind of stuck behind the line, you know, st stuck on row eight, they're not going to be able to do a lot. So uh, white just pushes the pawn forward here. And you can see this creates a number of problems. Okay. So next, black's next move is bishop, bishop to g7. Again, they're fixated on removing that pawn, but that's not the way they should be going. You know, maybe knight knight to c6 is probably better there. Okay, because this presents a number of other problems that will be exploited very shortly. As you will see, uh, white decides to play bishop to uh, c4 there. Black decides, black finally decides to develop the knight is that the best choice? Probably not. I still think the c6 uh, knight is a better choice here. I don't know if they're looking to castle or what exactly. Uh, but this presents a number of other problems here, as we'll see. Uh, and white does a slow, slow development of their bishop here by playing the pawn to d3, looking to develop the c bishop. And I don't know if you can see uh, black needs to move their queen quickly, or they're going to be in a lot of trouble here. Instead, uh, black decides to play a pawn on the outside. And again, this goes back to the theme. You want to develop your big pieces. Uh, you know, try to defend, of course, try to defend uh, certain pieces in the middle as well. But you want, you're looking for combo punches or uh, combination combinations of pieces, trying to set pins and skewers and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's... Uh, probably not the strongest move there. And uh, so white, or I decide to play <clears throat> bishop to g5. And I'm not really looking to do an exchange so much as what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to have uh, blacks going to have to defend. And I'm looking to take with the pawn, that pawn on e5. So black defends right there, capture with the pawn. Now, remember, the bishop on g5 is protected by the knight on f3. Okay? So, again, black has uh, the problem of trying to remove that pawn, so black decides to play the knight to g4. Okay? But the problem is, remember, white has a bishop on d4, so white just needs to play pawn to check. pawn to f7 check right there. We'll check. Look at it one more time. And not only does that put black in check, it shortens their moves, 
it also pretty much exposes the queen. Not that it wasn't exposed before, uh, but yeah, losing material there. And then, uh, as you can see, the rest of the game check is pretty much a series of checks check. and i actually miss a checkmate opportunity check. here is white uh yes i should have played uh queen to g5 checkmate but uh i check. got the next move but anyway uh long checkmate. story short uh you want to try to avoid doing some of those things if you want to have a better chance of winning or at least you know complain playing a more competitive game this game right here has a number of mistakes Made on both sides, mostly by black, but uh, white makes a mistake here too. So straight up development here, white uh, being careful to defend its pieces. Now black makes a big mistake here to start out. Uh, they decide to put their knight on the side. They, the old saying is knights on the rim are rim. Unless you have a specific plan or some combo, which black does not have. That's just a wasted move. Again, it's better to try to develop pieces here and give yourself a fighting chance of being able to coordinate something. Uh, you know, next move, white decides to open a spot for the bishop. Black's new idea is to set up a fianchetto. White plays the bishop forward there. Now, uh, black pushes the pawn. It's got two def defenders on that pawn, but again, it's not really developing. They're not really controlling the center. It'd be better off pushing a pawn. I, you know, if you're going to push a pawn in this spot and you're not going to do anything with it at night, probably best to maybe push, I would say, the D pawn to d6 and you can open up a spot for the the c bishop you want to get your pieces involved pieces don't have value if they're not being used i guess this is the best way to put it and i always try to tell myself this when i'm playing as well if i'm not developing the pieces if they're not being used they're not worth anything so here as white i decide to develop the queen there okay uh pushing the pawn forward uh looking to block what uh we were White's overload uh, was actually a good play there. Uh, so as White decided, you know, block, you know, push the pawn forward. I could develop the bishop too uh, on f1. I decided to play pawn to a3, just looking to block anything uh, defensively that uh, Black could do with a knight on c6. And there they decide to push the pawn forward, kind of pushing the issue here. Okay. Is why I moved the uh, knight out of the way, looking to exchange knights there. Black smartly does not want to exchange knights, but unfortunately, uh, what they've done is they've removed one of their defenders for the h pawn, the h6 pawn, where the original idea was to attack that. And remember, Black's king has no escape ability here. There's nowhere it can go. There's zero flight squares uh, because it didn't develop anything up in the middle, didn't move any pieces around. So that's, that's one of the problems you see with this position here. And it's why we're going to exploit that by just taking uh, with the bishop there. Uh, and Black decides, you know, they could exchange, you know, they could trade bishops. They decide not to do that. They decide to... Put two attackers on that piece there. Uh, the one little problem is, as you see, the bishop can just simply take and exchange, uh, which happens right there. And then, and then of course, uh, white decides to exchange at knights there. Now, I think that's probably not the best way to capture there with a pawn uh, because it... If you're looking to develop again, this this capture right here, if you're going to take, I would say take with a D-pawn, uh, capture to C6, D-pawn, because then you could develop some pieces. You give your king a way to escape. Your king's pretty much boxed in here at this point if your plan is black. So a uh, big mistake there. And again, uh, white bringing the queen, looking to take the, the knight on the rim. And they do some stuff here. Now here is where, uh, so black decides to push the pawn, you know, which is what they have doing. So white takes the knight right there. Now here's where white makes a huge mistake. And it's, well, the next move, not this one right here. So black plays uh, 
rook to b8, threatening the b2 pawn. Uh, white's simply just going to push the pawn forward to eliminate that threat. Now black plays. Now black decides to bring its rook forward. Big, big mistake. Unfortunately, uh, me play as white. Did not see that until after the fact. That was the game right there. That was the game. Unfortunately, did not see that. I just simply had to play queen to h8 check and then take the rook and check mate. Did win the game, but did not see that move. So, so you gotta, you, gotta, you know, you don't want to go too fast. You want to try to look through everything. Could be another point uh, to take right there. So I simply played the pawn, and I'm like, oh, I missed that move. Totally missed that move. So black finally does something good. I don't think that's the pawn you want to get out there, especially because now that opens up a slot for the queen to put the, the king in check there as well. Uh, but again, I'm looking to get these uh, rook and the queen together and then work that in for a, a mating pattern here. There, finally black pushes that pawn. That's what should have been pushed earlier so black can get, you know, its pieces involved. It's got a nice bishop there. It's got a queen. They can't do anything if they're boxed in, though. Check. So there's a check there. Defending check. check. And then, of course, check. white uh, plays check again. Check. Another check. And you can see check. it's pretty much just a matter of time check. before black is uh, checkmated there. Check. And then white brings the pawn forward. But, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much uh, going to wrap this up. I am going to be signing out here. Now, if you're looking for more uh, chess, i got uh, three different playlists on this channel. There's uh, Chess for Beginners uh, with tips. That's what this uh, is in. If you're looking for chess problems, there's a game called Pure Chess for PS4. We've got all we got 99 problems solved on there from anywhere from mate and one to mate and five, so it's definitely worth some checking out. That even if you don't have the game, uh, there's some good uh, mate and mate and two, mate and three, mate and four, pro, mate and five problems uh, that you you know you can hit pause and try to see if you can solve it yourself and then see how it's actually solved. And then of course there is chess against the highest uh, rated engines. I have not beat 3,200 yet, but I beat like a number of engines, uh, the Pure Pro Chess, uh, the several en engines for the phone, as well as the Majestic Chess app uh, as well. So anyway, uh, that's going to wrap this up. Don't want to ramble too much. Would like to thank you for watching here and wish you good luck.